Senator Mark Warner making waves tonight with a big warning to Trump, saying removing Mueller would be an abuse of power and calling on all senators to stand against that prospect. It all comes with the tax on Mueller hitting a fever pitch. One of the Republicans to first pick this fight on the House floor was Florida Congressman Mark Gates last month. I join my colleague, the gentleman from Arizona, in calling for Mr. Mueller's resignation or his firing. It is federal law that even the appearance of a conflict of interest means that someone cannot engage in prosecutorial duties regarding allegations and investigations. Congressman Matt Gates, right there. He also used an incendiary word that has picked up some steam this week, falsely claiming the Russia probe has a link to a military coup. We are at risk of a coup d'etat in this country if we allow an unaccountable person with no oversight to undermine the duly elected president of the United States. And I would offer that is precisely what is happening right now with the indisputable conflicts of interest that are present with Mr. Mueller and others at the Department of Justice. I join my colleague, the gentleman from Arizona, in calling for Mr. Mueller's resignation or his firing. We invited Gates the next day on the beat where he joined me and he's back live Tonight, uh, Congressman, thanks for making the time. Take a listen to Senator Warner's stark statement tonight. I'm certain that most of my colleagues believe that he wouldn't fire Jim Comey either. These truly are red lines and simply cannot allow them to be crossed. Your response to Senator Warner and why are so many Republicans trying to preempt the outcome of this investigation rather than let this former Republican FBI director conclude his investigation and see where the evidence lands? Well, if, Mr. if Senator Warner isn't convinced now, I don't know what it's going to take. You've got more than half of the people in the Mueller probe who've donated either Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama. You've got Peter Strzok, who was uh, really central to the clearing of Hillary Clinton, then drafted into the Mueller probe. We've now learned that not only does he have an intractable bias against the president, he actually had an action plan to undermine the duly elected president of the United States, you know, uh, deeming himself the insurance policy and the great savior of the republic, despite the fact that voters chose Donald Trump. You've got Nellie Orr, the wife of Bruce Orr, one of the top officials at the Justice Department, working for Fusion GPS, the very company that went and generated this salacious and unverified dossier on the president. So it seems as though everywhere we look, Ari, there is bias, and that bias converts to action that you wouldn't be able to prosecute a case on in any circumstance. Well, as you know, you named several people who aren't involved in, in the Mueller probe, like the Fusion GPS stuff. That's a, a separate matter, but we're talking about Mueller. When you look at the actual indictments, take Paul Manafort, who's now been indicted by the Mueller probe for laundering uh, $18 million, for acting as an unregistered agent of a foreign government, uh, and for hiding all of that. Uh, do you think that is a valid indictment? Why would you be against uh, Bob Mueller indictment? Inviting this person and them having their day in court. Well, there's a real question as to whether or not there's already been prosecutorial misconduct. I asked the question in the Judiciary Committee of the Attorney General, of the FBI Director, of the Deputy, F uh, of the Deputy Attorney General. When did we find out that there were these text messages with Mr. Strzok, who was central to both sure, investigations? Sure, but Congressman, I'm asking you a question. I understand, that, but I'm the asking you a question Ari, about the Manafort indictment. Is yeah, there, is there a Manafort. good reason for the United States to pursue this case, which, as you know, comes out of the Mueller probe, which has documented evidence of allegations of money laundering, or is your view that it would be better for America to not have that case proceed? Well, I think it depends on when Mr. Mueller came, uh, became aware of these conflicts of interest that clearly have infected the investigation. If he knew that he had evidence curated by people who could never be witnesses as a consequence of their bias, and then he used that to go get wiretaps to arrest people, to muscle them into plea deals, then yeah, that is prosecutorial so misconduct. But you're, so but, I just but want to get clear, that the because case. there's so Hold much on, discussion about people who aren't involved in the Mueller probe, uh, but then you look at a Strzok case like this. Involved. No, I'm talking about Peter Strzok, the, the very person who was involved in both the Mueller probe and the Clinton investigation. With so regard this to is the text, but the point is stranger that, to the you, Mueller probe. When you look at the Manafort indictment, just to take a specific example, trying to understand, as people at home go, well, if there's evidence he laundered money, he should actually have a day in court like anyone else. Your view is he should get that day in court or not? I can't quite get clear on your he answer. He should be treated like everyone else, but any other person would be... Uh, 
would be availed to the opportunity to have information disclosed to them or to their attorney if there is a witness, a fact gatherer, who would never be able to be called as a consequence of their bias. So again, I don't know the timeline on when Mr. Mueller learned about these intractable conflicts mm -hmm. of interest. That's why we've asked the question. It's why we're issuing subpoenas, and it's why the American people are going to get answers on how their money was used and who precisely was involved in gathering the evidence that's been used against Manafort. Let me play for you as well. As you know, as you know Mueller, Mueller is overseen by the acting attorney general for Russia, which is the deputy attorney general Rod Rosenstein. Here's what the White House said about his credentials. Rod Rosenstein, who everybody across the board has unequivocally said this guy is a man of upstanding character and essentially the gold standard at the Department of Justice. And that is the Republican appointee who has stood by Mueller as recently as this week. What specific evidence do you have against Rod Rosenstein, or do you just not like that he's letting Mueller do his job? I precisely asked Rod Rosenstein when we became aware of the Fusion GPS dossier and its link to Nellie Orr, someone who had direct ties to the Department of Justice through her very own spouse, and he said he didn't know the answer to that question. I find that completely inconceivable, that Rosenstein would show up to the Judiciary what Committee are you, But what are you alleging? What is the evidence? I mean, again, you're, you make so many charges against so I, many people. Anyone watching this sure. interview would think, wow, you've, you've discovered the, the hidden secret about all these names they've never heard of, but the question which you're not answering. Hold on. Well. Hold on. The question you're not answering right now, and you'll get a chance to answer it if you can on this live television interview, is do you have specific evidence against Rod Rosenstein, who has said Mueller's doing a good job, who was appointed by Donald Trump, or is this a sort of a secret conspiracy that goes out to these people you're naming that we haven't heard of, and it goes up to Bob Mueller, and then it goes up to the Republican Deputy Attorney General, but you don't have anything on him? What is your specific concern about Rosenstein? My specific concern about Rosenstein is that he was not forthcoming with information before the Judiciary Committee that we're absolutely sure that he has. Come Are on, you accusing him of really perjury? Believe? I'm, I'm accusing him of withholding evidence that should have been in the possession of the Judiciary Committee. And, he, and I don't think that he purposefully lied. You I don't, don't think, he, think he lied? No, I think that he withheld information that would illuminate further conflicts of interest so he that didn't would lie, shut down the So he didn't program. do anything wrong? I think he withheld information. I think that's something wrong. That's an indictment of his testimony before the Judiciary Committee. He Which, was not forthcoming about the information he knew about the links between the people who were actually colluding with Russia. Which, which and the means very what, though? You're alleging what? Department you're not alleging. Again, there's so many things that get said, and as you know, the facts are very important here, and they're mm -hmm. important on this show. What are you alleging about Rosenstein? He did not tell the Judiciary Committee what information. We are certain he has regarding the nexus between people at the FBI, in the Mueller probe, and at the Department of Justice. And that to means the very what? So you're saying it's not Russians. perjury and it's not withheld. But what are you saying? I just so well, our I, viewers I, understand what your position is. Answers. What My are you saying? He should be removed subpoenas. from overseeing the case? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that okay. we need to have we need to have subpoenas issued to get documents and answers so the American people know how their tax money was used and if their own government was working to subvert the very president that they elected in a fair election. That's what we need to know. That's why we're issuing subpoenas. It's why Andrew McCabe will be giving sworn testimony before the Judiciary Committee tomorrow. And Congressman Gates, uh, what you learn from those subpoenas and what your committee and, and your colleagues continue to do remains of interest to us.